Third time's the charm. All right. So something happened to the stream. Um, this time it wasn't because of me, because I had started it and I did not stop it. So um, I'm just going to run through the whole thing again. That way they have all the content in the same place and uh, hopefully answer any of your questions um, from the things that I just went over. But thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. I'm going to pop out this chat. All right. Sweet. Um, so this week, by uh, community request, uh, we're talking about UART runtime control on Zephyr. And this is great for things that you are, for situations where maybe you set everything statically in an overlay or in your device tree, and then, you know, it's, it's not going to be the same thing throughout the whole op operation of your application. So gives you the ability to change your peripherals, change your configurations, at runtime on the fly. So that's why we're here. And of course, I'm gonna ask again, but hit that like button and hit that subscribe button and leave a comment because I really appreciate you being here um, and providing these, uh, you know, these questions because just that's what helps kind of guide the content here on the channel. And also, if you haven't already subscribed to my mailing list, it's gerald.com. You can just enter your info and I send out an email usually before the, um, live streams and usually uh, live streams work <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, so let's get going uh, I'll just review this again uh, from Olivia uh, could you tackle how to dynamically change the UART settings like baud rate parodies stop bits things like that so you know typically the hardware interfaces get set up during boot in Zephyr and uh, that's just what you're gonna get throughout the whole operation of the device the nice thing is there are APIs that exist that you can do, use to change these uh, these parameters as you go. So by default, the UART use runtime configuration is enabled. So you don't have to do anything extra for this to work for your situation. If you want to change any of these configuration variables during runtime, it's already turned on. Now, if you don't care about that, if you want to use the static settings that were already provided with the overlays with your device tree, you can turn this off and save a little bit of space. So it's really up to you and how you like to use it, but for some people, they need to change these settings to different values to, throughout the life of their application. So it's very handy. So uh, let's run through that, hit the wrong button. So configured, you, everything's configured at boot, and if you care about what's already set and in the configuration you can use the UART config get and this will get the configuration from what's already set for the device and then you can change it and then reset it using UART underscore configure and uh, of course the API can be disabled to save space so here's what the struct looks like for the configuration of UART uh, UART serial and you can see baud rate parity stop bits data bits flow control there are, as I mentioned earlier um, in my second attempt on the stream, uh, there are no configuration for frame size or anything like that. So there are weird start or stop conditions. It's just kind of plain Jane UART uh, with some extra settings here to, you know, if you have to. Uh, this should look very familiar for everyone. Uh, the device DT get is the, the macro for getting your devices from the device tree and turning it into code essentially and we're always checking if it's ready basically making sure that it's initialized before we start using it that way if you have any issues uh, you uh, you'll know and you, you won't be using the peripheral um, if there's any errors so very handy and um, as I mentioned in previous videos the UART dev uh, uh, the null check so if uh, UART underscore dev is null then um, that will get checked within that device underscore is ready. I think that was one of the main changes in some of the APIs recently. So here's the configuration struct that we had mentioned before. And I'm just setting it here and then I'm just getting the value from the UR driver and I'm putting it into that UR struct. That way I have what was already set up and then I can essentially reconfigure, I can change things as I need it, as I need to. 
If you don't care, if maybe you have a default, a couple default configurations, and you just want to swap in between them, then you ha you don't have to use this function at all. It's not necessary, but if you would like to read before write, this is a great way to do it. Um, here's the setting of the uh, baud rate, and we're setting it to 9600. And then reconfiguring using underscore configure, and this uh, you are <laughs> underscore configure, you are underscore configure. And uh, that will set the configuration back to the device and reconfigure it however you want it. In this case, we're just changing the baud rate. So under the hood, you know, under, I'll zoom out here for a second before we jump to the Power APIs. So that's the basics of configuring devices at runtime. You can do it with uh, the other peripherals. I'll kind of touch on that at the end. But the idea here is that you can change these things in runtime because when I first started working with Zephyr I'm like okay cool I can set this in an overlay it's basically statically set for the life of the application like how do I modify or change these things so with that said we'll um, we'll also talk about and touch on the the uh, the runtime control for the power management side because the power management side essentially does some things where it modifies the driver or disables the, uh, the hardware side of things, so the actual peripheral and also the pins. So we can use it to enable disable, uh, to save, or, you know, to save power, or enable it to actually use it depending on your simple situation. So again, and just we're getting the device using the device DT get uh, macro, and then we're using the latest power management API. These did change within the past six months. Uh, they did revamp their uh, power management APIs. So in a previous video, I was actually using the older one. So this is the latest one. And if I um, go back into the slideshow here, you can see uh, it's called PM device action run. And the, uh, the mode that we want to use is action suspend. And this is all dependent. And this is something that I brought up many times previously. And I brought it up in the my second attempt at this live stream. But your... Uh, all these functions, these APIs, are all dependent on the HAL layer implementation. So if you don't have a very strong HAL layer implementation, you might not be able to use these APIs. You might be able to call them, but they actually don't do anything. So for instance, Nordic is great. They're, they've been very thorough in their implementation of all these APIs to make sure that you can use them. And, for power savings to make sure that, yeah, I, you do have the ability to reconfigure your after, after boot. But you're kind of on your own if, if uh, you're the chip vendor or maybe, maybe there's a community support for a hardware application layer that maybe is just like the person implemented what they, did, they needed, which I've done before, and then just kind of did, didn't do anything else. So that's uh, like outside of Nordic, I, I've you're on your own. You're 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 going into uncharted territories, but there are some great support for other chips out there. I know the STM32s and NXP is a big uh, supporter of Zephyr. Um, they're a big member, so that's just something to keep in mind. Like, hey, this thing isn't working for me. It's like, oh, is it implemented down at the hardware layer, to, or you know, the app abstraction layer between the hardware and Zephyr? That's the biggest thing to ask. So. Um, so down at the hardware layer for uh, Nordic, you can see UART NRFX PM actions, so the power management actions. I removed a bunch of stuff in there just because, uh, hey, it's, it was just crazy. It was probably a couple hundred lines of code um, with a lot of uh, macros and things like that. But at the end of the day, you have a UART underscore disable, which we're actually disabling the hardware. And uh, the next thing was just disabling or reconfiguring the pins to default. That way you're not pushing or pulling any current. Uh, it's, it's basically setting these guys to high Z and restoring them to as if they were never used for that interface. So in conclusion, it is possible to reconfigure UART at runtime. And uh, plus with power management APIs, that's something you can do. That's something you can do um, also. So that you can disable things and it will actually manipulate the hardware it, at runtime to you know turn things off and save power or you know turn it off because you're not using it or turn it off because maybe you're utilizing those pins for something else like imagine hey 
I can turn off the UART and maybe use those pins to read or write the state of what the what's going on on the other end. I know I've done that for hardware testing. Um, turn off a UART device and then read those pin states and then turn it back on to do some toggling and then turn it off again or whatever. So that's also um, important and useful if you are doing anything, um, any hardware trickery there. And like I mentioned, um, there are similar APIs that can be used for other interfaces too. Um, so think Astro C Spy, things like that. So all that stuff exists. Uh, again, it just depends on your hardware application layer implementation and the support you get from the manufacturer of the chips and so on and forth, so forth. So it's all there. It's just a matter of will it work. And in this case, I can say the stuff with Nordic does work. So, and uh, that's it for today. Uh, again, I really apologize for those who probably tried to join me earlier. Uh, hopefully you'll come back and see this one here and you'll watch it all the way through and hopefully it actually went all the way through and didn't cancel in the middle. But uh, really appreciate you being here. Leave a comment on the things you'd like to see done or talked about on these live sessions because that's what forms everything. Uh, that's what, you know, that's the inspiration. And I'd love to answer more of the questions that folks have in the community. So um, thanks again for being here.